My dearest brothers and sisters, this is Tunia speaking. I love you so very much. Consider a man who says that he wants to be rich, no matter the cost or no matter what he has to do for it. Is this man actually being motivated by a desire towards wealth? Or is he being motivated by a movement away from fear and a movement away from feeling unseen, away from feeling unloved and feeling empty and without purpose? People are often motivated not by their desire to go towards something, but are instead motivated by their desire to move away from something. And that something is often unresolved and possibly even unconscious fear or pain. So, in today's message, I will argue that a number of women, and also some men, are sometimes acting the way they do because of a movement away from an unresolved and possibly unconscious trauma. The person may have been traumatized in her current life, or in a past life. This trauma is that far too many children on earth have died and still are dying to this day. Before we proceed, in this message I will be discussing dead children and rape. So please only continue with this message if you are okay with those topics. So let's get to it. My starting point will be obvious. Having your child die is incredibly, incredibly painful. So painful, in fact, that the pain of a dead child can linger into a person's next life, whereas people d themselves dying is a pain that usually doesn't linger into a person's next life. As a result, not everyone, but a substantial amount of people carry around a possibly subconscious trauma around dead children. Meanwhile, not many people carry around a trauma about themselves dying. The next point I want to make is being raped is absolutely awful in several ways. And one of the ways in which it is awful is that historically there was a chance that being raped could eventually lead to a dead child. After all, the rapist father isn't likely to stick around and protect and provide, which historically often meant a dead child. Plus, if she's raped, the woman doesn't have the chance to select a partner with high quality and compatible genes, which is done subconsciously through attraction, which means that her child is again more likely to die. So. Certainly not the only, but one of the reasons why lots of women are so terrified of being raped is that historically a rape could lead to a dead child. And as we've established, the fear of a dead child is an incredibly strong fear, one that can linger across lifetimes. Some people might think that I'm being too theoretical here, and say that rape is simply awful because it's psychologically devastating. I absolutely agree that rape is awful because it's psychologically devastating, and I'm saying that one of the, not the only, but one of the reasons why it's psychologically devastating is that historically being raped could lead, later lead to having a dead child. Another reason why being raped is awful is that it can be violent and can even lead to the woman's death. Yet, while that absolutely is another way in which being raped is awful, I don't think that typically weighs as heavily as the fear of dead children in the subconscious of the average woman. Of course, women are different. This is because, as we said, People have more inter-lifetime trauma around dead children than around their own deaths. To illustrate that, let's turn to a recent online debate where women were asked, would you rather meet a bear in the forest or would you rather meet a man in the forest? Now, logically speaking, 
the answer is that meeting a man is safer. And after all, women come across, let's say, a hundred thousand men in their lives, and if they came across a hundred thousand bears, they would almost certainly get eaten alive. Therefore, one bear is more dangerous than one man. Now, it's true that overall, women are more likely to get raped or murdered by a man than she is likely to get eaten by a bear. But that's just because most women encounter huge amounts of men in their lives and encounter either zero or a very few bears. The question wasn't whether a woman is more likely to get raped or murdered by a man than eaten by a bear in her life. The question was whether she would rather come face to face with one bear or one man in the forest. And one bear is clearly more dangerous than one man. Some people have a Disney view of bears or think that if you just know one or two simple tricks, then you can survive any bear encounter. But the reality is that wild animals are unpredictable. Timothy Treadwell was a bear enthusiast and founder of a bear protection organization, so he knew bears well, and he and his girlfriend got eaten by bears. Note that bears often pin down their victims and start eating them while they're still alive. It's a slow and torturous way to die. So the rational answer is that it's safer to meet a man than a bear, yet a number of, not all, women answered that they would rather meet a bear. What is going on? Well, as we discussed, the visceral fear of a dead child is often emotionally stronger than the fear of the person themselves being the victim of violence or murder. I think that's a big part of you have a number of, not all, women effectively saying that they prefer a higher chance of being eaten alive over a smaller chance of being raped which in turn might lead to a dead child. Those women answering that they'd rather meet a bear aren't usually thinking in such ways, but that's how it goes with emotional processes. First, a choice gets made for emotional reasons, and then the rational mind is used to come up with a good-sounding justification for the choice. It's like how a person chasing wealth at all costs isn't consciously thinking that they're being motivated by feeling unloved, even if that's the thing driving their actions. So, I think the bear versus man debate points to the fear of dead children being active in a lot of people. After all, why wouldn't this fear be active? Unfortunately, and this hurts my heart, every day many children are kidnapped on earth, more than official statistics indicate. And these children may be raped or tortured or sacrificed or their bodies are used as a resource for various kinds of products. And earth humans, being psychic, deep down know this. So of course many earth humans are anxious about dead children. Why wouldn't you be? In fact, because children are still being kidnapped every day, this is more of an ongoing trauma than a past trauma. But because people don't know that it's mostly the dark controllers who are behind it, this can manifest as hostility to, well, men. Because a tiny part of the population who kidnaps and rapes children are indeed mostly men. Even though the vast, vast, vast majority of men never do this. So on a subconscious, fear-based level, average men are seen as potential rapists, which means potentially dead children. And average men are seen as potential child kidnappers, which again means potentially dead children. And average men are seen as people who, at the very least, are failing to stop rape and stop kidnapping and hence stop children from dying. And I get it. In my society, people don't get raped and children don't get kidnapped. 
But if the amount of rapes and kidnapping in my society was as large as it was on Earth, you can bet that us Pleiadian women as a group would sit our men down and tell them, you are the protectors of society. This is unacceptable. We expect you and need you to completely fix this problem of rape and child kidnapping. But then again, us Pleiadian women are also see ourselves as the ones responsible for showing love and appreciation and giving help and active emotional support to men, including average men, including unlikable men, including men who aren't our friends or family, including men to whom earth people would say we have no responsibility. And in a situation like the one on earth, us Pleiadian women would be actively protesting to end anti-male discrimination. Still, on earth there are so many rapes and child kidnappings, and the public doesn't know that the dark controllers are responsible for most kidnappings, and so men get blamed. In that situation, I can see some women turning hostile, or at least cold or callous, towards average men. This is not a good thing. It's not fair to men. The average Joe never rapes or kidnaps anyone. How is he supposed to end rape and kidnapping on a world with a population of many billions of people? But I do get the anti-male hostility. This is one of the reasons why society is currently blatantly discriminating against men. Yet few women are speaking out or are protesting to change that. Let's look at two quotes. Alozia and Yamba said, The genocide in Rwanda is a far-reaching tragedy that has taken a particularly hard toll on women. They now comprise 70% of the population, since the genocide cheaply exterminated the male population. This is, of course, insane, because if mostly men get murdered, then aren't men the primary victims? Certainly, if most women would have gotten murdered, then people would be furious if anyone suggested that men were the primary victims. So then, why does a woman say that women are the primary victims when she herself also says that it's primarily men that got murdered? Well, similarly... Hillary Clinton said women have always been the primary victims of war. Women lose their husbands, their fathers, their sons in combat. Why do women say these things? Well, look at the last four words of that Hillary quote. Women lose their sons in combat. This is the dead children trauma poking its head through. That is why you have Hillary Clinton saying that women are the primary victims of war. It's a statement that is incredibly callous towards men, and it is also a statement of unresolved dead children trauma. As the final part of this message, let me mention some effects that the dead child trauma can have on some people. The dead children trauma can reduce the desire of people to start families. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that the dead children trauma is the only reason why people might not start a family. For example, economic reasons are a huge one as well, but it's one reason. The dead children trauma can lead to people having sexual issues or being less interested in sex, because without sex you don't have a child and hence it can't die. The dead children trauma can nudge women to have a preference for tall, confident, in shape, possibly non-crying, possibly aggressive, possibly violent, possibly psychopathic, possibly criminal men. Because that's the kind of guy who comes out on top in a knife fight or the death to protect their child against some predator. Indeed, serial killers have women lining up to date them. Some women feel less safe if they're with a man who says, or displays that he has deep and long-lasting emotional pain, and some women feel safer when they're with more aggressive and more violent men. It doesn't make sense to feel safer with more violent men, 
until you realize that violent men are more likely to be able to fight off predators that might threaten their child. This reduces the fear of dead children. The dead children trauma can nudge women to be really picky because the better genes her partner has, i.e., the more attractive he is, and the better of a protector and provider he is, the less likely their child is to die. The dead children trauma can nudge women to want to become more masculine or more powerful, such as being a female CEO. Or it can nudge women to want to see movies where tiny women beat up highly trained men three times her size in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Feeling more powerful in this way can mitigate this fear of dead children. When women say they want a man with a particular trait, what the woman sometimes means is that she wants a man who has a certain level of attractiveness and income, and ideally he has that trait as well. This frustrates men to no end who genuinely have that trait but don't have the required level of attractiveness or income. And in some cases, the unspoken attractiveness requirement is so steep that it eliminates most men. I completely get why this frustrates men, and in an ideal world there would be clearer communication. On the other hand, I also get the female unconscious thought pattern of, if you have that trait I want, but you don't show the genetic quality or income to ensure that our child will survive, then sorry, but no relationship is going to happen. I don't want a dead child. <clears throat> if a woman is asked out by a man she considers unattractive, sometimes she has a quick kind of ick, slight disgust reaction. This can be the dead child trauma poking its way through because, again, being with an unattractive man might lead to dead babies. But, of course, if a man asks a woman out and sees that she has an ick reaction to that and potentially even rejects him harshly, then that can really hurt the man. He didn't actually do anything wrong. He just asked a woman out. This can discourage the man from approaching women in the future, which, unfortunately, I also get. People say the worst thing she can say is no when you ask her out, but actually, she can have a dis disgust reaction which might really hurt the man emotionally. And I know that men don't like to admit or even consciously realize that some things hurt them emotionally, but men absolutely do get hurt emotionally. Now, to be clear, women are different, and not all women have this dead child trauma or are affected by it in all the ways I described. This dead children trauma also obviously isn't the only factor that influences the behavior of women. Also, a woman with fewer dating options may label fewer men as being unattractive than a woman with more dating options would. Different women also rate men differently. Furthermore, people can, of course, increase their level of attractiveness in various ways. And yes, there's plenty that could be said about male behavior, too. In my mind, Neither the average man nor the average woman is to blame for the dysfunction in modern earth relationships and for the disrupted dating scene. Most people are non-evil and are just trying to navigate life and move towards comfort and move away from fears and pain. Painful and potentially unfair seeming in situations can be caused just by people making unconscious choices even if no one is being intentionally malicious. Most of Earth's problems would be solved if people had a higher level of consciousness and if people cared more about their own psychological development and healing. So Earth's situation would be helped if people observed more, if people did their internal and possibly external work, and if people communicated more clearly with one another. My beautiful sisters, I am so, so sorry that so many of your children have died during your lifetimes on earth, 
and I'm so, so sorry about all the sexual violence and child kidnapping on earth. It's heartbreaking and absolutely awful. I hope that soon earth will move to a situation where that is a thing of the past. It is my sincere hope that this message has pointed out something previously unseen and that healing can occur because of this. After all, observation is the first step and what you're feeling, you're healing. So long as you don't suppress it, judge it, or immediately try to change it. And to my amazing Earth brothers, yes, I know that many of you also carry around this trauma and unfortunately many other traumas or pain besides. You are very much in my thoughts also and I love you very much. My beautiful Earth brothers and sisters, I'm so sorry that Earth is so dark and harsh. Hopefully things will be cleaned up and made safer and hopefully we will meet in the not too distant future. I love you so very much. Your star sister, Tunya.